Mom, what are you doing today? Providence Place, owned by the Sisters of Providence, an ideal rental setting for retirees to continue their active, independent lifestyles. We have bright one and two bedroom apartments, a magnificent chapel with daily mass, restaurant style dining, and wellness and entertainment programs. Call for a tour, 413-534-9700. Call me when you're not so busy. Coming up on this edition of Real to Real. I'm Nick Morganelli and I need you to save the date. I hope my story on the upcoming first Catholic Life Conference to be held here at the Mass Mutual Center will inspire you to register. We continue an historic look back at the Catholic influence over the motion picture industry. And Dan Dumas has the latest news from the Diocese of Springfield. These stories and more are just ahead on this edition of Real to Real. Hello and welcome to Real to Real. Nearly two dozen faith-filled and dedicated committee members are planning a dynamic one-day conference that's sure to bring a spiritual renewal for children and adults of all ages. The March 21st Catholic Life Conference is the first of its kind here in the diocese and will feature nationally recognized speakers, music, comedy, mass, reconciliation, and much more. Here's Nick Morganelli now to share what they've planned and why you will want to put Saturday, March 21st on your family calendar. Growing our personal relationship with Christ through our Catholic faith. Perhaps it's something we place last in the list of things to do in our day or in our week. We've had conferences for women, for men, and for youth as well here in the Springfield Diocese. But the time is now for something new and even bigger. How much he wants to feed the people here in the Diocese of Springfield is just so obvious. The vision is to bring life to the diocese. We're completely impressed with April, who's holding it all together. We are enjoying the vision of the whole. We're all excited about it. April Hellenick, the director of the first Catholic Life Conference for Western Mass, has been working with a dedicated and diverse group for several months, and they have a full day planned just for you. Everyone should go. We have a baby room for babies and moms with a screen that will project uh, the, the conference in real time. We have a children's program for four to 12 year olds that is gonna be run by the Sisters of St. Benedict. There will also be something visually special, which was the inspiration of a teenager from Italy, Carlo Acutis. We're really excited about this display that will be happening throughout the conference. It's 150 huge posters of Eucharistic miracles all over the world. Oh, we're called P-O-P-P-L-E, that's what's Popple. We have Popple, which is for the kids or the child at heart. Anyone can go to that. They can pick that as their, their breakout talk. Where would this world be without a kazoo? Uh, we have Hudson Biblo, who's going to be talking on identity as a child of God, but he really is covering homosexual, transgender issues that we all have questions about and what the church teaches, which is actually a very compassionate teaching. This faith is full of such power, and do we know it? Do we live it? We have Trish Short, who speaks on pro-life, divorce, conversion. She takes mercy and just opens it up. And I thought, oh, that's what we need. We need to hear how big this is, that mercy is big, that the Eucharist is really big. We have Scott Hahn, of course, who is a theologian from Steubenville. He's a convert. He'll be speaking on the family. And he'll also be speaking on the Eucharist several times. Anyone would gain something from one of these talks, whether it be joy or a question answered or a feeling a unity or something that needed to be confirmed in them. The venue for this conference is right here at the Mass Mutual Center. The committee hopes to fill every seat because they have a great vision for helping you in your life journey as a Catholic. We absolutely to our core desire a reinvigorated faith in everyone. Why is it so big? So that we can all go back to our separate areas, into our smaller parishes, and know that we are part of something so much bigger, and that it's a big, beautiful Catholic church here in the Diocese of Springfield. We have been praying that God would allow for conversion 
uh, constantly in our lives. We would love for them to walk away with a renewed sense of faith in the Eucharist and the other sacraments that our Lord has given us and uh, just a pride in their Catholic faith. My hope is that the Catholics in this diocese and maybe the ones around us are really going to come together and feel like, ah, we're all Catholic and this is good. So that's one thing. But I think mostly that it, they'll have this connection with Jesus that will, will just turn all the lights on in their Catholic faith. It is important to plan on attending and register today. The cost includes lunch and the process has been simplified by committee member Dan Sontag. So any question that they had, they could find it on the website, catholiclifeconference.org. Register and pay. They can become a vendor and they can purchase the number of tables that they want, eight foot tables, six foot tables. They can become a sponsor and donate that way. Gearing up for an incredible day of education, fun, and renewal of faith, for Real to Real, I'm Nick Morganelli. And for more information or to register for the March 21st Catholic Life Conference, we have posted a link at iobserve.org. Well, Catholic News Service in Washington, D.C. celebrates its 100th year in operation this year. While marking this milestone, CNS is taking a look back at the origins of Catholic influence over the motion picture industry. Part two now of their series examines the power of the Catholic Film Office over Hollywood movie producers in commanding moral authority over content. Once the National Legion of Decency proved to Hollywood filmmakers it could impact them where it really hurt by cutting profits at the box office, the leaders of the organization were given an influential role in content development. There was cooperation between the National Legion of Decency and certain important figures within Hollywood who saw that censorship by the government or boycotts were going to be bad for the industry. No exhibitor would want to release a C-rated movie. Green would get the script and then look at it and say, you know, this, this, these lines are sex suggestive. That was one of his famous phrases. It was really about sexuality, but negotiating with the industry, they, they needed something that was very yes or no. If there was no nudity, then the sexuality wasn't such a big deal. If the sexuality wasn't a big deal, but there was a moment of nudity, it suddenly became a big deal. Many time, we got nothing to do, and lots of time to do it, why? Come on. They claimed that the Legion was established because moviegoers were very offended by Mae West's, which I don't really believe. I mean, Mae West was suggestive, but uh, risque, you might say. It was never dirty or anything like that. But it is true. If you look at the pre-code movies, uh, first of all, uh, the cleavage was rather obvious. The uh, loose living was rather obvious. They showed the seamy side of life, but I mean, nobody had to pay for what they did. I remember Pat Sullivan reporting back to us reviewers with some satisfaction that he had met with the producers of Bonnie and Clyde and given them the ultimatum there was a scene at the top of the stairs, Bonnie was at the top of the stairs, and you could very briefly see her bare breast. And he gave them an ultimatum that we we're gonna to have to condemn this movie. So they clipped 10 seconds from the movie, and now they could give it in a form. Then the issue, of course, was violence. Was violence too much? But violence didn't have the same negative reaction from reviewers and consultants that sex did. Besides being in a negotiating position with the studios, the Catholic office was kind of beginning, in some sense, to educate the public. Now, the process they used for doing the ratings was important. They would have a half a dozen reviewers, and they would have another 20 or 30 consultants. And the way it worked was the studio, a few weeks before the movie's release, would have critic screenings 
and they would have special critic screenings for the Catholic office in a preview theater. We would all go to the, the preview movie, then the consultants would go back to Brooklyn or Queens or wherever they lived in New Jersey, and they would send in their comments and reviews. Often with the screening, we'd come right back and sit down and talk about it before we even got the, we got the consultants' reports in. None of us knew what the rating was going to be. I think Henry Herx put everything together, and then on the basis of that, the rating was assigned. The Legion couldn't impose the pain of sin on you for seeing a condemned film. You might have a legitimate reason for seeing a condemned film. For instance, a Catholic film reviewer is assigned to review for a secular paper. But what the perception generally was, was to go to a condemned film, even if it wasn't a sin, was at least an occasion of sin, because you had been advised that this was a spiritually dangerous film. And so you were placing yourself in the position of being exposed to an occasion of sin. And that's sort of where the outlook lay right up until the 1950s and 60s. And next week in part three of their series, CNS will highlight how changes in the church resulted in a more positive engagement with Hollywood. And still to come on Real to Real, Dan Dumas has the latest news from the Diocese of Springfield, and Mark Giza shares his predictions on who will take home an Oscar. These stories and more are still to come on Real to Real. The Chalice of Salvation, your weekly spiritual connection. I'm Passionist Brother Terence Scanlon, your Chalice host, inviting you to take time out of a busy day and join us Sunday morning. We welcome Fathers David Darcy and Michael Wood and highlight our diocesan seminarians. The Chalice of Salvation, your spiritual connection, Sunday mornings at 10 on 22 News WWLP, and coming up next on Fox 23 WXXA. Providence Place, owned by the Sisters of Providence, an ideal rental setting for retirees to continue their active, independent lifestyles. We have bright one and two bedroom apartments, a magnificent chapel with daily mass, restaurant style dining, and wellness and entertainment programs. Call for a tour, 413-534-9700. Mom, call me when you're not so busy. What have you done for your marriage today? I took the baby while she worked. Today we've actually organized a date night tonight. I got up with the baby while he slept. Yeah. What have I done for my marriage today? That is a great question. I have carried my wife's purse. Boy, I gave a huge hug this morning, like a really big squeeze. We're going to the museums as a family. What have you done for your marriage today? Don't forget the small stuff. Need ideas? Go to foryourmarriage.org. A message from the Catholic Church. Here are a few events to add to your calendar for the month of February. This Tuesday, February 11th, is the World Day of the Sick, and Sacred Heart Parish in Feeding Hills will be hosting their annual Mass of Healing and Anointing. All are invited to this special liturgy at 6 p.m. at Sacred Heart Church, 1065 Springfield Street in Feeding Hills. The Sacrament of the Sick will be available as well as the opportunity to be prayed over by one of the many priests and deacons that should be there for this event. On Sunday, February 23rd, the Sisters of St. Joseph of Springfield will sponsor their annual Irish Gala from 1 to 5 p.m. at the Castle of Knights, 1599 Memorial Drive in Chicopee. The fundraiser will include music, dancing, raffles, corned beef sandwiches, cash bar, and more. Music will be provided by the Andy Healy Band with Mary Ward. Irish dancing will be performed and Irish soda bread made by the sisters and friends will be sold. Proceeds will benefit the Sisters of St. Joseph. Tickets are $25 per person and are available at the Sisters of St. Joseph Congregational Offices at 577 Carew Street, Springfield, during regular business hours. Contact Sister Eleanor Harrington at 413-536-0853 for more information. 
And on Wednesday, February 26th, The Pitch, a play about baseball, best friends, and betrayal will be performed at the Majestic Theater in West Springfield. The St. Thomas More Society, an organization of Catholic lawyers, is selling tickets for The Pitch to raise money for Catholic scholarships. Please order your tickets by calling 413-747-7797. Email any questions to attorney Michael G. McDonough at mgm at efclaw.com. I'm Dan Dumas with your Real to Real News Briefs. Pope Francis Preparatory School held its first career fair last week, showcasing dozens of future job options available to students. The career fair is part of the new Pathways program instituted this year at the Catholic High School, designed to lead students into areas of interest in different careers. The fair gave students of all grade levels a chance to explore options. Is an exposure into the business world, into the medical profession. We have, you know, some of the up-and-coming photonics and lasers. Uh, we have agencies from all over the community. We have the police, Mass State Police, um, that came in to really give us exposure, give our students exposure um, to a lot of different opportunities that they may have going forward. Junior Elizabeth Gonnett says the career fair was a good way for students to be able to talk to real people in the field. I want to go to law school and the DA's office here and um, a lawyer from Bacon and Wilson's here. So I really got to talk to them and trying to figure out like what kind of law I want to go into and kind of get their advice, like what helped them to figure out what they want to do. And Senior Tony Chen asked a lot of questions at the tables he visited, including our own Catholic communications. He already has hopes of making it to Hollywood someday. I want to be a film director and I'm majoring in film production in the college and uh, I think it is important for film directors to know a little bit about everything because you can make great films uh, in many aspects. So I think the career fair, fair is really important because well we have the opportunity to learn more about other careers like to be more open to be more liberal open-minded I guess. Last fall, St. Michael's Academy in Springfield concluded its year-long 10th anniversary celebration with an evening gala. Steve Kiltonic attended and spoke with couples honored by the school. On October 26th, over 175 people attended a 10th anniversary gala held in the gymnasium of St. Michael's Academy. The event was held to commemorate the school's celebration of its founding in 2009 and to thank its sponsors over the years. The anniversary remembrance began earlier in the year with a cornhole tournament and a massive Thanksgiving at Holy Cross Church. The gala included a dinner, cash bar, as well as a silent and live auction of various prizes from sports memorabilia, sports tickets, vacation trips, as well as food and wine baskets. The highlight of the evening occurred when three couples were honored for their dedication to St. Michael's Academy and continued support of Catholic education. George and Jan Cartier, Jim and Elaine Tortolat, and Paul and Josephine Sears. Right, so Real to Real's Nick Morganelli was the master of ceremonies and narrated a video presentation on each couple. Springfield Bishop Mitchell Rosansky and Principal Ann Dougal also presented each pair with an award. Of the Cartiers, she said, They were involved in our advancement early on, helping us to get the advancement program off the ground. Um, George has been in our building painting, he, he has arrived in our kindergarten dressed up as Curious George and read the story for them. Um, Jan has been very supportive of all of our financial um, attempts at raising money. So they really have been very instrumental. Jim Tortolot served as the first chairman of the Board of Trustees in 2011. He helped develop the Academy's first strategic plan and was instrumental in helping to identify supporters for the school and pushing the advancement program forward. Jim and Elaine worked as co-chairs of the Fund for St. Michael's Academy during the school's early days to get it up and running smoothly. Jim said he often looked to Elaine for ideas and advice. She had a lot of experience as a teacher and as a guidance counselor and uh, school counselor for many, many, many years. So all that elementary education stuff was a, a real 
resource for me. And that, I think, contributed a lot to the way the board saw things and the way we structured the school in the early days. Paul and Josephine Sears met as classmates at Holy Name Grammar School. They were the first co-chairs of the Fund for St. Michael's Academy in 2013. Over the years, they participated in Academy events, such as school masses, pinning ceremonies, or Christmas concerts. Fourteen of the Sears' 17 grandchildren have either graduated or are currently attending St. Michael's. We believe in Catholic education for ourselves, for our children, and for our grandchildren. Uh, this is a perfect school. It is very well run. The staff is very inspired and inspiring. And it's easy for us to say this is something we'd like to support. They have just been cheerleaders for Catholic education and really putting our name out there in the community and helping us really put St. Michael's Academy on the map. The night included a performance by the St. Michael's Academy Choir. In Springfield, I'm Steve Kiltonic. And finally, during the recent Catholic Schools Week, St. Mary's High School in Westfield welcomed prospective students and their families for a meet and greet. It was also a chance to learn more about the academic changes set to begin next fall at the school. Kathy Harrington reports. We ask your blessing upon our school and we ask... With a prayer, Father John Salatino welcomed prospective students and their parents to St. Mary High School in Westfield for the second open house of the academic year. This time, Principal Matt Collins had big news to share. Changes ahead for the academic experience. In the fall, the school will adopt a university model schedule and the Great Books program. We were looking at ways for St. Mary's to kind of exemplify what they do really well. Superintendent of Catholic Schools Dan Belarjan and Assistant Superintendent Josh Agnew were on hand for the open house. Belarjan explained the university model means longer classes on the same days and at the same time instead of a daily rotating schedule. And research has kind of shown that the longer the kids are engaged with text, the longer they're engaged in discussion, the longer they're engaged actually reflecting on what they're reading um, and actually having good conversations about it, the more they actually retain. The change to university model scheduling means non-traditional students can enroll for specific classes. The addition of the Great Books program is a return to the classics. Literature like the Odyssey, Shakespeare, Beowulf, books that help students to think more deeply. Principal Matt Collins says the changes will help to increase enrollment. And since we've been talking about it you know, through our parent, um, parent communications at the school um, and kind of getting it out, of there, getting it out there on social media, uh, we've had a lot of inquiries. Um, we've had We've had four um, shadow days already um, in the past two weeks. So I think it's going to have a really positive impact on enrollment. Whether it's full-time students or part-time students, it's still going to impact our enrollment. With enrollment up 10% this year and the diocesan takeover of the high school, Collins says the commitment to Catholic education is evident at St. Mary's. Dr. Belagian has come in. He's brought some fresh and new ideas as well. Um, and he's paired them with a lot of what Sister Andrea's ideas were. And he's really working well with the bishop and with the, with the, with the diocese on making sure um, that Catholic education is, is sustainable and something that um, is an option for students in Western Mass. Collins fondly calls the students the best voice for St. Mary's. Following the presentation in the gym, prospective students and their parents toured the school with student guides. In Westfield, I'm Kathy Harrington. And remember, you can always stay informed on all the latest news in the Catholic Church, locally and beyond, by logging on to iobserve.org. There you can read articles written by our Catholic Communications staff, as well as view archived episodes of Real to Real. That's iobserve.org. I'm Dan Dumas, and those were your Real to Real news briefs. The 92nd Academy Awards Ceremony will be held Sunday night celebrating an incredible year of achievement in filmmaking. This is such an exciting night for film buffs, especially our own Mark Giza, who of course has been waiting all year for this night. Here now with Real Culture are his Oscar picks. Light the candles and fill the punch bowl because it's Oscar time. 
Who will walk home with those little golden statues? Let's find out. Best Supporting Actress, Laura Dern in Marriage Story. As a top lawyer who will do anything for her client, Miss Dern gave a tough lady some heart and soul. Also, Hollywood loves her, and so do I. Charlie, can I ask you, how do you expect to have more time with Henry when you don't exercise the time you already have? And exercise it responsibly. Best Supporting Actor, easy, Brad Pitt, for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. A great performance by an actor who is way overdue. He is a shoo in so Me an actor? No, I'm a stuntman. Look, Look at me! Best Actress. As Judy Garland, Renee Zellweger took on a role of a lifetime. Watching her gave me chills. Also, this year the Best Actress race is very slim. So she has this, hands down. Also, Hollywood loves a comeback story, and hers is perfect. There's an audience out there waiting to hear you sing. My mouth dry and it could fall apart. Listen to me. I can't. You'll be fine. Now, on you go. Best actor. Okay, I know Hollywood is going crazy for Joaquin Phoenix for his work in The Joker. And yes, he will win. But this year, Adam Driver and Antonio Banderas both gave their best work in years. Joker was unsettling for me. I needed sunshine very, very fast after that film. Murray, one small thing. Yeah. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? Best picture. OK, this is where it gets tricky. Yes, I do feel 1917 was my favorite film of the year, and it will win. But Hollywood also went crazy for a small film called Parasite. So the coin is in the air. Let's hope my film is picked as the winner. If you fail, it will be a massacre. We've got orders to cross here. That is the German front line. And you can see my reviews, as well as read other movie reviews, provided by the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops online at iobserve.org. That's iobserve.org. And coming up on Tuesday, February 18th at 7 p.m., you'll be able to see Red Sea Miracle, the first installment of a two-part Bible-affirming investigation. There has to be enough Israelites in order to make Pharaoh and the rest of Egypt scared. Whether the 10 plagues happened is a miracle. Whether the Red Sea parted is a miracle. Archaeology cannot prove or disprove a miracle. This special documentary film will be screened at the Cinemark Theater at the Hampshire Mall in Hadley, the Cinemagic Theater in Sturbridge, also the Beacon Theater in Pittsfield. Again, that's only on Tuesday, February 18th at 7 p.m. at all theaters. Tickets are available to purchase now, and we have a link at iobserve.org. And you have a few more weeks to head over to the Majestic Theater in West Springfield to see the fantastic play, Death Trap. In the next few weeks, we'll be taking you to the Bushnell, Theater Works, and the Hartford Stage for the very best in theater. I'm Mark Giza for Real Culture, have a fabulous weekend. And for this week, that's Real to Real. Thanks so much for watching today. Remember, for more updates anytime, you can find information and news on the Catholic Church, both here in the Diocese of Springfield and around the world on our news and information site, iobserve.org. We are also on Facebook, updating daily while our reporters work on stories for Real to Real. So check us out and friend us at Catholic Communications. And we will see you next week for another edition of Real to Real, your window on the world around you. Have a great week. Real to Real is a production of the Catholic Communications Corporation, funded in part by the annual Catholic Appeal, and the support of you, our faithful viewers.